Hey friends, if you're looking to transform a tired and outdated piece of furniture into something antiqued and distressed, you're in the right place. In this tutorial, we'll guide you step-by-step -step through the process of using Waverly chalk paint and wax to create a beautiful antiqued finish on your end table. If any piece of furniture needed to be cleaned first, this one did. After spraying cred cutter on it, I used a metal scraper to remove the splattered paint and sticker Then I wiped down the rest and went back over everything with a clean wet rag to make sure it was all clean. It already looked so much better at this point. The top was pretty scratched up though, so I used our carbide scraper to scrape off most of the old finish before sanding the rest off. I don't know if the blade is getting dull or if the finish on this was thick, but it wasn't as easy as normal to scratch off. But still, I completely believe that it made the whole process go faster than it would have if I had only sanded or used the chemical stripper. For the edges, I put a thick interface foam pad onto my sander with 80 grit sandpaper to easily sand the curves. Before I put on the interface foam pad, see how hard it was to sand that curve? That pad or foam pads make such a big difference. To get into the corner of the edges, I wrapped some sandpaper around a contour sanding grip. And then I sanded everything a couple more times with 120 grit sandpaper and 150 grit sandpaper to make it all feel smoother. This whole process took about 30 minutes from start to finish on this little top. The inside of the drawer looked extra dirty as well, so I sanded inside the drawer with 150 grit sandpaper to remove the pretty drawings and the stains. This right here is a huge reason why I love this Surfrep sander. The small profile and the rectangle shape made it so easy to sand in this tight space and clear up into the corners. And now the drawer looks so fresh and clean. I love it. Then I put a medium grit foam pad onto the sander and lightly scuff sanded the end table to remove the glossy sheen making a surface that the paint will better be able to stick to. Then I cleaned off all of the dust and taped off the raw wood top so I wouldn't get any paint on it. I used a roll of pre-taped plastic and some painter's tape for this. And then I set up my spray paint booth by laying some plastic on the ground and some old cardboard on top of it and then my handy dandy five gallon buckets for the table to sit on top of. This time I wanted to quickly paint the end table so I put cheap Waverly chalk paint in the color night sky into my paint sprayer. This paint is thick though, so I added quite a bit of water to it I would guess at least 20% water to paint ratio here. See the difference in the thickness here? When I sprayed it though, it had a lot of fisheye texture in it. And if I would have primed before painting, I'm sure that this would have turned out a little bit differently and I would have gotten better results in the end. But even though I used a sprayer here, this paint is one of my favorites to brush on. It's acrylic based and so it self levels leaving behind a brush-free finish, especially if you add a little bit of water to the paint before brushing it on. With the paint dry, can you see these uneven spots in the paint? This is where I had sanded to bare wood before I painted. If I would have primed, those would not have shown up like that, but for this look that I'm going for, it didn't matter as much. 
I painted on another coat of paint and then I let it all dry for about 24 hours. Then I applied a coat of clear wax with a chip brush in a small section. I made sure to get it all over and then I wiped off the excess with a lip free rag. Immediately after, I brushed the antique wax on with a different brush, in the corners and into the details. And then I wiped the excess away with the same cloth. When there was too much antique wax for my liking, I brushed on some clear wax and it wiped the dark wax away. I did this technique on all of the chalk painted areas. Usually wax feels really tacky to me for at least a few days, but this combination of the paint and this wax dried quickly. And I was really pleased with the thin consistency of this wax. Then I removed the plastic from the top of the table and applied some Lily Moon Smoky Gel Stain onto the raw wood. I've never used this stuff before and it was given to me, but I thought the color would go perfectly with the base of this table. Since I applied it onto raw wood, it soaked in and dried really quickly. So it ended up looking kind of splotchy and uneven. I tried putting some more on in the places that were darker to remove some of it. I don't know if it helped or made it worse. So I stopped and I let it all dry. And if it was terrible, I could just start over. It wasn't terrible though when it was dry. So I lightly sanded it with a fine grit foam pad to soften the streaks. Then I put on another coat trying to work faster this time. After that was dry, I brushed on a few coats of water-based polyurethane to give it a durable finish. Since I have multiple sheens in my workshop, I used a satin first and then finished it with a matte sheen so it would match the rest of the matte looking table. The satin finish is more durable than the matte finish. So the first coat of the satin gave it a slightly more durable finish than if I would have just used a matte finish for all coats. Last but not least, I found this drawer pole in my stash of hardware. So I attached it to the drawer and here's what it looks like now. This French looking finish isn't necessarily my style for my home right now, but I love the look of it on this table. What do you think of the new look? Does it match your decor in your home? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to see more of our videos. Are you confused and not sure where to start with your furniture makeover? Don't worry, I got your back. Click the link in my comment to download our free painting checklist so you can paint your furniture as if you hired a professional to do it.